The Mr. Locario's 30-minute game session is a private one-on-one coaching session on the phone or through Skype. For 30 minutes, you'll get answers to any dating questions you have. To set up your 30-minute game session, go to MrLocario.com. That's M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. MrLocario.com. Check out a brand new book out right now called The Unconquered, The Yamasi and Gullah Geechee Wars. This book is a historical novel about the 1715 Yamasi War and the first of the three successive Gullah Geechee Wars that were fought and won against the white supremacists by the melanated soldiers during the early 19th century. This book has a lot of good information in it. It talks about how they defeated their former oppressors and enslavers in South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama, and they maintained and established autonomous settlements in Florida that thrived and existed for almost 200 years. The book is available right now at paperback and by ebook. Both can be purchased at theunconquered.movie and on Amazon. Yo, check out the award-winning docuseries Elementary Genocide. This docuseries provides a critical expose of mass incarceration, the war on drugs, and the connection between slavery, capitalism, and the prison industrial complex. This docuseries features Dr. Umar Johnson, Dr. Boyce Watkins, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, Killer Mike, David Banner, Professor James Small, Kaba Kamene, and so many other people. Check out Elementary Genocide, the School to Prison Pipeline, Elementary Genocide 2, the Board of Education versus the Board of Incarceration, and the latest installed. Elementary Genocide 3, The Academic Holocaust. It's all available now at elementarygenocide.com. Yo, if you are a parent or if you are a teacher or if you're somebody who just values education, then you have to pre-order Gifted and Lit. Gifted and Lit is an animated DVD series that uses hip-hop to teach kids lessons in math, language arts, drug prevention, and much, much more. You need to check it out right now at giftedandlit.com. Pre-order right now at giftedandlit.com. What's up, family? If you're looking to make music and you need an experienced, no-nonsense audio engineer that can professionally mix and master your music, then check out my friends at legendarymix.com. With over 15 years in the music industry, their expertise is unmatched. Legendarymix.com delivers professional music, mixing, and mastering for a great price and fast turnaround times. And as a bonus sign-up to their email list at legendarymix.com, you'll receive a discount link and a free music marketing ebook. So drop everything right now. Send a text to legendarymix.com at 347-565-5892 or send an email to music at legendarymix.com. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Chris Fair, everybody. And I got a brand new video game app out right now, everybody. It's called Crispy's Biscuits, everybody. And you can get the Crispy's Biscuits app right now on the iPhone Apple Store, everybody. And you can also get it on the Google Play Store, everybody. As a matter of fact, everybody, it was the number one game on Google Play all last week, everybody. The game is so exciting, everybody. There's 10 levels you can help me get through, everybody. Where well, I'm dodging bottles of lotion, everybody. I'm dodging hair clippers, everybody. And I'm dodging taco meat, everybody. So get the Krispies Biscuits game right now, everybody, at CrispiesBiscuits.com, everybody. Now I'm about to do my coon laugh, everybody. The most intense new video game app has now arrived. A medieval kingdom has been plagued with chaos and disorder. An evil force has dominated the land. And now it is up to the bravest knights to fight back the demonic forces and bring justice to the kingdom of the Moors. Play the newest, most exciting battle fight game app ever, Moorish Kingdom. Available at MoorishKingdom.com You're now tuning into the king of game, Tariq Elite, on Tariq Elite Radio. You better recognize! We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. We are back, ready to chop that game up. I'm in a nice, mellow, Mackish mood. Glad to have y'all tuning in, family. Y'all getting ready for the holidays? Thanksgiving is here. I know folks out there chilling with your family. I know some of the fake hotep niggas. Why you celebrating Thanksgiving, son? 
Nigga, you celebrating too. Everybody's celebrating Thanksgiving. Nigga, you in the system of white supremacy. So if you sit in the house eating a bean pie, nigga, you eating it on your day off because ain't nothing open. You in the system of white supremacy. So you can sit up there with your koofy and your bean pie and your criticism to people eating turkey and shit, but you sitting your ass at home too. Umstafa, Alkaline Water, Jones, whoever your name is out there, niggas. You know how you are. Those niggas be on some... Why y'all niggas celebrating Thanksgiving? Nigga, where you at right now, nigga? I'm at damn hometown buffet, nigga, but that don't mean nothing. <laughs> but I digress, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad to have y'all here. Shout out to everybody who has received the 1804 DVD. That's still killing the game. 1804movie.com. If you have not seen 1804 yet, go to 1804movie.com, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of folks are calling right now. I'm going to take a couple of calls because I really want to get into the game. Let me let me grab this call real early. Let me see what's going on with the family. If the phone lines act right, come on, answer the phone. There you go. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what up? It's TJ calling from Toronto. Hey, brother. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I just wanted to ask you a few questions. Uh, actually, just one specifically about documentaries because I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to make one, so I wanted some tips about that. Okay. So, uh, what were you thinking about <laughs> making a documentary about? Well, it's about fashion, uh, just like historical, kind of in the same uh, vein as Hidden Colors. Okay. But fashion context. Okay. Well, what you have to do, you got to get a lot of stock footage of. Um, fashion and you got to do a lot of research and you know you right. gotta you gotta become a historian when you do these films and you gotta study right 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 and you gotta make it interesting and something that um has not been discussed before and also you got to get a lot of good exactly. art- articulate speakers who can hold an audience right. that's the key right right you got to get mm-hmm. some people who you know motherfuckers want to sit there for two hours and watch you understand right yeah. right, right right so once you do that you'll be good yeah, to go. i appreciate it I appreciate that, Tariq. And shout out to you, man. You're killing it right now. You know, I'm a longtime supporter. And uh, yeah, keep doing your thing, man. Yeah, somebody, fuck all these white supremacists. There you go, man. Somebody in the chat room said it's going to be hidden hymn lines. <laughs> James hidden Earl, what? James Earl Moans in the chat room said that your movie is going to be called Hidden Hymn Lines. <laughs> man, <laughs> hidden. <laughs> I need a lot of yeah, I I know, Hidden line. clothing. All right, man. I, I, yo. Thank you for the call, brother. All right, that's our brother from Canada. Shout out to Canada. Y'all always, people always say, Tariq, we want you to come to Canada, but y'all ain't, y'all haven't sent the bag down here. So do you really want me to come up there? You guys haven't sent me the bag yet. Y'all don't want me to come to Canada. Y'all say y'all want me to come to Canada, but y'all know money talks and bullshit walks. When people want to make something happen, they make it happen. And y'all haven't made it happen, Canada. So until you do that, you get on your little moose and ride off and cut the bullshit. I'm calling Canada out. Y'all better get your money. Y'all out there chasing them white women. That's the white women to break bread so y'all can have your boy come on up there and chop up game with you. You dig? But um, anyway, let, let's let's get into a little game and what I some things I want to talk about. There's a few things I want to tell. First of all, let me get into the whole um, thing that's happening over there in Africa right now. Um, everything that's happening in Zimbabwe. Now, as we know, Robert Mugabe, they have overthrown him. There was a military coup. They tried to say it wasn't a coup, but it was definitely a coup. They got him out of there. A lot of people think and suspect that this coup was Western back. The U.S. and Britain may have had something to do with it. There's strong evidence that even China might have had something to do with it because I understand the head of the military there met with some people in China before the coup, from what I understand, according to some documents. Understand, whenever there is a military coup, a military takeover, those things take money. It takes money to overthrow somebody. You dig? Where's that money coming from? And the thing is, a lot of people in Africa, a lot of people over in Zimbabwe, they were celebrating, jumping all around in the streets. 
Now, somebody in the chat room said, I thought he said he wasn't going to resign, but they were going to impeach him anyway. So they gave him an opportunity to just re go ahead and resign. They were going to impeach him. They were going into the process of impeaching him. So he went on and resigned. Now, the thing is, with Mugabe, Mugabe wanted, you know, anybody who did business over there, any foreign countries, a percentage of it, really half of it, had to go to the people there. So if you wanted to do anything about the diamonds, do anything about the resources over there, half of those resources had to go to the, the half of the ownership, 51% had to go to the native people there. Now understand, Zimbabwe was sabotaged by the West because of the trade sanctions. Understand, when there's economic devastation in certain countries, realize where it's coming from. The sanctions were imposed by Western countries. So understand that. And in Zimbabwe, I saw a lot of images of black folks out there celebrating that Mugabe was was taken out of power. And I keep asking the people there, OK, who are they going to replace him with and who's backing his replacement? How is the replacement going to maintain independence over there in Zimbabwe? See, nobody's answering these questions because when I ask people these questions, they're so big to shit on Mugabe. Okay, if you don't like Mugabe, that's fine. But who are you going to replace him with in order to maintain the independence there so it doesn't become recolonized by the white supremacists? And a lot of people there don't seem to care about that. And what I've seen is a lot of black folks in Zimbabwe celebrating and hugging and kissing the white people over there. There's a lot of white people over there. And many of these are future Rhodesians. Un understand. Zimbabwe is about to become Rhodesia 2.0. Zimbabwe is about to become Rhodesia 2.0. And understand what Rhodesia is. O Rhodesia was what Zimbabwe was before it was Zimbabwe. In modern terms, you had an, an open white supremacist named Ian Smith, who was the, 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 the ruler over there. And he specifically stated this is a, a land for white supremacy. This is going to be under white supremacist rule. He was an open white supremacist. And Mugabe and his people overthrew him. But understand the white supremacists, they, they never settle. They never just kick back. They always plot revenge. So they've been planning on getting that thing back under white supremacist rule for the longest. And now they're going to do that. I saw black folks over there hugging, kissing, buck dancing for the white people over there. I was arguing with people on Twitter. A brother on Twitter from Zimbabwe told me, I think he's living in England now. That's another thing. They go to other countries and be like, I'm repping Zimbabwe, but your ass ain't over there. So this Zimbabwean cat was like, hey, man, don't worry about all that stuff. Mugabe is out. And we're all unified over here. Black, white, yellow, green. We all unified. And that's the general consensus over there now that there's some kind of unity, racial unity between the native African people and the future Rhodesians. And black people, we cannot be this goddamn naive after 500 years. It's 500 years and you're still falling for the same dumbass trick. Zimbabwe, y'all are jumping out of the water right into the frying pan. If you don't understand anything, you haven't learned nothing in 500 years. The white supremacists do not share power with you. If you don't get that in your goddamn skull, African people worldwide, especially over there in Coonbabwe, because that's what it is right now. It's Coonbabwe, the way they're acting over there with the hugging and the kissing and the loving up on all of those future Rhodesians that's about to be your new conquerors over there. They're about to turn that place over into South Africa. Black folks love oppression as long as the oppression is from white mommy, white daddy. When a black person is perceived to oppress you, all you raise up then. 
but you do nothing when white mommy and white daddy is doing the same thing and worse. If you go to South Africa, which I have been all over South Africa, it is dominated 100% by the white supremacists and the black people are the majority and they have that same mentality where they're subservient to these white supremacists while they have nothing. They're going to turn Zimbabwe into the new South Africa Rhodesia where all the white people have the, the resources, they're living in condos and nice homes, and the black people are gonna be funneled into shanty towns, just like South Africa, but as long as white mommy and white daddy are across the street and you can look at them, these Negroes are gonna be fine with it. It is Coon Bobwe over there right now. That's the long and the short of it. That's what it is. Don't let these Negroes fool you. Understand, Africa is Coon Train Central right now, family. They love oppression over there. That's why our brother Claude Anderson said, it's Africa, you're not going to, to stop white supremacy in Africa right now. The coon spirit is, is, is dominated Africa. It's, it's up to us. We're gonna have to do the heavy lifting over here, family. We're gonna have to do the heavy lifting over here. And like my man James Ramon said in the chat room, they gave up all their leverage. So this new guy, the, the vice president, who's now gonna be the head over there from what I understand, we don't know who's backing this guy, who's funneling, who's putting him up there, who's propping him up. We don't know if he's gonna maintain the independence of that country, nobody's really holding him to maintain the independence independence of the country. It seems like the majority of the people there can't wait till white mommy and white daddy come in and subjugate their little old ignorant asses. It's embarrassing to see all that cooning and buck dancing over there. Y'all got work to do, all that celebrating. We, some celebra we love celebrating some bullshit when we don't have all our ducks in order. Your ducks ain't in order for you to be celebrating like that. Zimbabwe right now at this moment is wide open to colonialism to colonize that shit right now from the Asians and the or the white supremacists and that's exactly what they're gonna do while y'all niggas out there dancing bucking bucking your eyes and kissing up on white men and white women trying to bed buck and bed winch they're gonna bed winch your ass right into a damn shanty town where you pissing in an alley and they're living in luxury homes right across the street from you but I digress get it together over there Africa Please get it together over there. Because a lot of y'all, y'all listen to the show, especially my African brothers and sisters in the UK. Get some information to your family over there and tell them to stop all that buck dancing and cooning. Dope one. My God. Anyway, I digress. Let me get a call here because I want to get into some, some stuff. Hold on one second. Let's see who we got. What's up? Who's calling? What's going on? What's up? Who's this? Uh, my name is Issa. Say your name one more time, brother. Issa. Issa, what's on your mind, Issa? No, n nothing. I was uh, it's, so I'm listening to Rick uh, talk about you know what's going on in Zimbabwe, and I was I was curious about how come all the, the news reports are coming out of the BBC. I mean the BBC, and you don't really see any uh, you know like African news channels in Zimbabwe news, and so and I wanted to, to to you know to talk about you know what are the, what type of media outlets uh, you know like should we be looking for to try to find some of this type of information. Man, it, it, see, that's why it's important for us to, to create our own media. Um, I would look for some online sources. You know, just going through the BBC and the um, Associated Press, you're going to get their version of it. And, you know, they're going to try to make it seem like it's the big kumbaya thing. We need to have people go over okay. there. Yeah, we need. Okay, let, I, I'm going to say my answer off, off the phone, brother. Uh, but okay. we, yeah, we need to have people go over there, and I would like to go over there and just to see what's going on and see what the vibe is, and I might have to put that on my bucket list to see what's happening over there and, and just get the real deal. Just like in South Africa. See, we see stuff on South Africa, and if we look at the media, the media makes it seem like black people are over there just bawling out in South Africa, and the white supremacists over here are talking about that there's a white genocide in South Africa that white people are just being slaughtered and killed, which is a complete fucking lie. That's a huge damn lie that they promote over here. 
So what we're told about South Africa is that apartheid is over, everything is equal, and black folks are just doing so good over there. And the black folks are in danger because, I mean, the white people are in danger because black people over there doing so good and they might get revenge. That's bullshit. You go to South Africa and the white people over there are fully 100% in control and they have all the resources, the land, the economies, everything is still owned by the white supremacists over there and black people are living in squalor in South Africa. They will try to front and act like they, I think a lot of black folks from there are embarrassed by that. Because I've had arguments over here with black folks who are living in other countries, but they're from South Africa. And they're embarrassed to admit that black folks don't have it popping in South Africa. Showing me one or two black folks who might live in a condo, that ain't shit. I'm talking about the majority of the people over there are living in squalor. They have them funneled into these little ass places called townships where they're just stacked on top of each other in shanty towns. While there's white supremacists living right across the street in a luxury damn home. It's a sad fucking case. That's what it is. They can kind of sugarcoat it all they want. I ain't got no reason to lie. I got a video of it. Go Google, um, go to YouTube and look up Tariq Nasheed tells the real deal about South Africa. I filmed it. I went all around. It wasn't selective filming. I went literally looking for upscale black neighborhoods. Couldn't find one. I'm looking for a neighborhood with nothing but upscale black people in South, in Cape Town in particular, because that's one of the wealthiest places in South Africa. I couldn't find one. But I digress. Now, what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about this new term. I won't even say it's a new term, but it's a it's a term that the white supremacists have been using lately about black people and you only see this term applied to black people. And when something is applied over and over again by those in the dominant society, we have to look at it for the dog whistle that it is. And I've been seeing a lot of the word ungrateful used towards black people. With all of the NFL protests, Colin Kaepernick, all of these people protesting um, white supremacy around the country, a lot of people in the dominant society love throwing the word out. These players, these millionaire black people are so ungrateful. These people make millions of dollars and they are ungrateful. Anybody who talks about racism is ungrateful. That's the, the little code word they use. My man Sean King said ungrateful is the new nigger. Because notice this, they never say a white person is ungrateful. They, they rarely say that. And Donald Trump tweeted something early this morning about LeVar Ball. As we know, LeVar Ball's son uh, what's his son's name? He has three sons. Uh, Leon, I can't think of the other son's name, but one of the sons where he was in China with his friends with UCLA and they were accused of shoplifting. And Trump keeps trying to make it seem like he got them out of jail, which they were not in jail. Understand this family. This whole Trump saved them from being in jail for 10 years is 100% bullshit. I want y'all to listen to me, family. The white supremacist knows that that is bullshit. Leangelo, that's his name. Shout out to the chat room. The white supremacist knows that it's, it's bullshit, but they love repeating bullshit over and over until it sticks. That's how white supremacy works. White supremacy works on telling a lie over and over again. You dig? But the thing is, Trump went over there. Well, he was already over there, by the way. They shoplifted. They weren't going to get no 10 years. Contrary to belief, they don't have harsh penalties like that in China for shoplifting. They don't have the, they don't really put people in jail for no 10 fucking years for shoplifting over in China. That's another lie that they keep telling over here. That's another lie. But Trump might have had a meeting after the fact. They were going to let those guys go. They had them on quote-unquote house arrest at the, the hotel. 
and they were free to walk around. So they weren't in jail. Let's stop that. They were in jail bullshit. They weren't in jail. They were going to eventually come on home pretty soon. Trump was already over there. So he just used this as an opportunity to try to act like he did something that he didn't do. Um, the boys thanked Trump. They were like, well, we like to thank President Trump. So they were very diplomatic about it. They like, we, we did wrong. We're sorry. They took responsibility for whatever happened because who knows if they shoplifted or not. We don't know what happened. We don't know. But the boys apologized and they thanked Trump. All three of the boys who were involved in the incident, they thanked Trump. And that should be the end of it. But with Trump and when it comes to black folks, you're supposed to bow down. And LeVar Ball, the dad, the dad ain't bowing down. He's not kissing the ring of white supremacy. So Trump has been criticizing him on Twitter. He called the man a... a a low budget Don King or some shit like I mean he's really Trump is really going in on the dude and Trump tweeted this this morning he said LaVar you could have spent the next five to ten years during Thanksgiving with your son in China but no NBA contract to support you remember LaVar shoplifting is not a little thing it's really a big deal especially in China ungrateful fool Trump tweeted that he tweeted that this morning but that ungrateful word it's not just applied to him it's not just uh, about LeVar Ball Un it ain't just about this incident by the way either it's not just about this incident that's the whole thing with them, the white supremacists calling us ungrateful. I was on Fox News the other night, and I'm going to play a clip of that, and I'm going to break that down in a, in a second. And here's a tweet from a Fox News listener who saw the show and who, who got upset. I'm going to explain the show. I'm going to break that all the way down. But this guy, his name is um, Least of Creatures, a white supremacist Fox News viewer. He said, Tariq, quote, everything I don't understand is suspected white supremacy, Nasheed is acting like an ungrateful swine. Honestly, this is how you respond. Fuck giving you a voice on their platform. So I'm being called ungrateful and I put out a tweet today. I said, family, and let me talk to the people in the dominant white society. When you say ungrateful, when you refer to black people, who are we supposed to be grateful to and what are we ungrateful for? And I told black people, don't help them with their answer. I would like for them to answer that question. And I got zero answer. Nobody answered it. Nobody answered that question. But this thing where we're being called ungrateful Over and over again, you're ungrateful. You're ungrateful. Ungrateful to who? For what? What did you do or what did anybody do to make us grateful? And that's white supremacist code speak for we're grateful for letting you live. Boy, you're in a system of white supremacy. We can kill you anytime we want to. And they're absolutely correct. We can kill you with impunity. And you are absolutely correct when you say that. That's what supreme means. Supreme means I can kill you with impunity and you can't kill me. And you should be grateful that we're letting you be alive right now. That's what they're saying, family. That's basically what they're saying. You should be grateful we're letting you walk around. We have race soldiers out here who can take you out and we will acquit them. So you should be grateful that we're letting you live. That's what they mean by that family. They won't, they won't answer the question when you ask them directly. They'll dance around a bunch of bullshit. But that's ultimately what they mean. They went extra silent on that. It's back to the uppity nigger thing. Ungrateful is the new uppity nigger. That's what they used to do before they they would lynch black people during Jim Crow. When a black person walked around with his head up, they were like, wait a minute, this nigga is uppity. Let's show him what we do to uppity niggas. And then they'd hang him. 
And that, that was a lesson to all the other uppity niggas. Don't be uppity now because we're letting you walk around. Don't get carried away with it now. We're letting you walk around. We're letting you walk around and and, and do what you need to do. But if you get a little uppity, we'll, we'll have to put you in your, your place and make an example out of you. And somebody in the chat room said, well, why don't they just come out and say it? Because understand, white supremacists speak in code. They have to speak in code. The white supremacists love speaking in code. That's how they operate. And they speak in codes where only they, each other, other white supremacists, are supposed to understand. See, that's the thing we have to understand. We have to understand the code words that they use. And we have to get a code. We have to get a code. And the thing is with the white supremacists, they're not about playing fair. They understand that the system is unfair. This is why black folks have to stop trying to explain how unfair systematic white supremacy is. Don't, don't trip on that. We got to stop trying to explain that to the white supremacists. The white supremacists, they, it's all about domination. Just like Richard Spencer says, it's not about fairness. It's not about equality. It's about dominating. That's all they think about. It's all, it's all about dominating. And this is why I, and I'm transitioning into the Fox thing. And this is why I, I go on these shows so I can show you black people how to utilize your words to shut down the white supremacists. Because our brother Neely Fuller teaches us how thoughts become words and words become action. So we got to be very careful about our thoughts. We got to be very careful about our words and words are used as weapons. So we have to know how to shut down bullshit with our words because what happens if you don't know how to counter people or counter ideologies with words, those words from the white supremacists can become your thoughts. Then you will mirror their words and you will mirror their actions against yourself. So it's very important to understand game. You have to understand how the white supremacists work. You have to really study them. Now I shut down this suspected white supremacist female on Fox. And understand, the white supremacists know it. They, they can't even pretend that I didn't shut her ass down. Usually they like to pretend. See, the white supremacists, this is another thing. The white supremacists, even if they lose, they pretend that they win. They're very good at that. Even if the white supremacists lose, they like to pretend that they somehow won. I was watching a documentary about the L.A. riots, very good documentary. And at the end, they were talking about all the people who got killed during the Los Angeles riots. And it was something that, it was very interesting at the very end. They said, yeah, 50 uh, something people got killed. The majority of them were black. And it was very interesting that they added that in there because that's not true. That's not true. See, what they did was break people down by ethnicities. So during the L.A. riot, I think it was like 28 black people got killed. Uh, how many white people? It was like, uh, oh, let me get the exact numbers for you. It was a certain number of white people then it was like two Asian people and then it was like 19 Hispanics. So they broke the Hispanics off into their own thing. But the truth is most Hispanics are classified as white too. See, that's a little trick bag. So the majority of the people who actually got killed were white during the LA riots. You see, watch how they code it. So they want to make it seem like they didn't really take a loss. So we're going to break down the whites into ethnicities. See, that's the code that they used to make it seem like they didn't lose anything. Well, the majority of the people who got killed in LA were white during the LA riots. So they're very coded on how they utilize their language. They're very coded on how they do that. But if you want to understand how white supremacy works, how white supremacy takes a loss, but act like they win, because when it comes to coming up against us, just showing up to them is a win. If they show up and just get in the fight, that's a win right there. See, that's why they have to ambush us and do little shit like that. 
we got to understand how they work. Ambushing us is a win. When they go and shoot an unarmed black child and ambush him, we look at that like, what kind of bullshit is that? To them, that's a win. I want black folks to understand this. It's not about morality. It's not about honor. It's not about integrity. Are those people, meaning black, did we wipe one out? Did we get one in on them? Did we suck a punch them? Did we hit them? That's all that matters in the mind of a white supremacist. There's a guy. He's a white supremacist troll, but understand those white supremacist trolls. Understand trolling is a tactic used by white supremacists so that you will lower your defenses around them. So I, I say the troll, the term troll very loosely. But there's this guy on YouTube. His name is Charlie Zelenoff. He's a little racist fuck, a little weird racist white supremacist. And he's a wannabe boxer. And he says little racist shit. And what he does, he goes around bragging about how he's a, a champion boxer, how he knocks so many people out. And what he does, he goes to boxing gyms and asks people to spar with them. And then when they're not expecting it, he sucker punches them. And in his mind, he goes around saying, okay, that's a win. I just got one punch in and shit, that's a win. And you Google this dude, and I mean, people have whooped the beat his fucking ass. He sucker punched some brothers and they just beat, literally beat the brakes off this fucking dude. But the fact that he got in one sucker punch, that's a win to him. There's a video where he's in a ring with um at a boxing gym with Floyd Mayweather Sr., Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s dad. Somebody said he's mentally ill. Miss me with that bullshit. Somebody in the chat room says he's, he's mentally ill. No, well, then all white supremacists are mentally ill. I don't give a fuck about that mentally ill talk. He knows what he's doing. He ain't that mentally ill. When somebody's whooping his ass, he knows how to run. He ain't that mentally ill. But he got in the ring in the little um in the gym with Floyd Mayweather Sr. And Floyd Mayweather Sr. was whooping his ass. When Floyd Mayweather Sr. turned his back, the dude sucker punched Floyd Mayweather Sr. and hit him in the damn back of the head. Some other brothers jumped in and whooped this dude's ass. But this dude goes around and he, he tries to sucker punch people and gets his ass whooped and he runs around talking about how he's undefeated. I'm undefeated. I'm the best. I, I knocked this guy out. I, I knocked Floyd Mayweather Sr. out. And you think he's mentally ill and a lot of people say he's mentally ill, but that's how white supremacy works. That's how white supremacy works. White supremacy is some mentally ill shit, but it ain't. It's systematic. See, we try to dismiss that sick shit, but no. That's how the system works. That's how they think. That's part of their code. You dig? Oh, yeah, the few brothers, I mean, literally just beat the brakes off this fucking dude. But the fact that he can get a punch in, that's a win to him. Just like with um, Conor McGregor, the fact that Conor McGregor showed up to get his ass whooped in the last Floyd Mayweather fight. You had white people running around talking about how Conor McGregor almost had him. I'm like, what fight were you watching? Just the fact that he can get a couple of punches in, that was a win to them. But I digress as far as that, but for those who don't know, I was on Fox News the other day. They called me up, and I went on down there on Laura Ingram's show. Now, Laura Ingram is a, a friend of Trump. As a matter of fact, Trump was retweeting her today. So she's a close friend of Trump's. So she has a show on Fox. So they wanted to bring me on there to boost their ratings. They were, you know, and I already know when I go to Fox, I already know what's going to go down. I already know. You already know when you go in, that's how, that's chess. When you play chess, you know what your opponent, opponent is going to do. Your opponent, their job is to try to trip me up. That's their job. Their job is to try to catch me slipping, find a talking point to use and to, to pounce on to use against me and use as, against black people in general. And because I'm a person who's kind of influential, 
they think if they can try to get a sound bite out of me so they can flip it and use that as a white supremacist talking point, that's a good thing. That's a win for them. So you got to know how to play chess with people. And this is why I go on these shows. I'm not on these shows to win them over. Understand this, family. I don't go on these shows to try to get them to see my point of view. They know what the truth is. These people are there to spin the truth. They're there to spin reality. My job is to make them trip up on their words on their own show and show how hypocritical they are. And my job is to show black folks how to shut down these arguments that they use on you and us every day. So I want to play the clip and I'm going to break it down in between the clips. And I want y'all to study how I shut this lady down to the point where they cut my mic off, as they usually do. When I get the best of them, then they start cutting the mic off, which is cool. I expect that, but they did it extra fast this time. When the white supremacists take a loss, they throw all decorum out of the window. It was not. It didn't give me no goodbye. Have a nice day. Thanks for coming. They literally cut my mic cut me off the screen, and that was it. And I want y'all to listen to this. I want y'all to, I'm, we're going to break this down. This is very important to study. So this is me on Fox News the other night, and we're going to break it down line by line. And I'm going to tell you how to handle these suspected white supremacists. Graduated from Dartmouth just a few years ago. Uh, on February 2nd, the college is scheduled to hold a forum called What's up with white people? The event will feature Temple University sociologist Matt Ray, and he plans to provide a, quote, field guide for, quote, the different types of white people. Okay, now, they brought me on the show to talk about this university. There's a white guy who's going to have, like, some kind of course or some kind of um, lecture about what's up with white people, and they're going to be studying white people and all this stuff. And their whole narrative was basically this is bullying white people. So that was their narrative. And they wanted me to come on there and give my opinion on that. And that was one of the segments. And they wanted me to talk about something else, but they cut the segment short. But this was one of the segments we were supposed to be talking about. And how you can learn to spot them in their natural habitats. Sounds like the Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Dartmouth released a statement saying it's committed to robust debate and told Fox News that the Professor Ray does not represent the views of the college. Joining us now for reaction from L.A. is Tariq Nasheed, a film producer who also bills himself as an anti-racism strategist. All right, take it away, Tariq. How is this? And we don't know what exactly is going to happen in this, but you've got kind of a summary. Right. How is this not going to foment more racial division since it's based on quote whiteness um i think that the professor should have worded it differently now i do disagree with what's up with white people as the title because white people are not the problem and i don't like to paint everybody with one broad all right did you get that did you catch that all right now you see what i'm doing right there Right now, I'm, I'm just deading her whole argument right there, and I'm going to change the narrative, and this is very important, black people. When you get around those in the dominant society, you have to control the narrative. That's so very important. You have to control the narrative. Got it? Because, see, with her, with Laura, she's supposed to be the intellectual one of the network. See, like Tucker Carlson, they know he's just a troll at this point. He just deliberately says dumb shit, and he's trolling at this point. And that kind of makes the network lose its integrity, which they don't have it anyway. But that gives the illusion, that makes them lose their illusion of integrity when you just have the newscasters trolling like Tucker Carlson. But with her, Laura, she she's the intellectual. Got it? So they need somebody to talk about race from a quote-unquote intellectual standpoint. But the thing is, notice how I'm changing the narrative. Now, we're not going to talk about white people. And I disagree with them talking about white people. That's incorrect. So I'm killing their argument right now. And I'm changing the narrative. 
brush. You have white people and you have white supremacists. And I think that it should have been entitled, What's Up With White Supremacy? Or How Can We Dismantle and Understand White Supremacy? So the whole thing of painting all white people with a broad brush, I definitely disagree with that. But it's a very interesting topic if we want to talk about the ins and outs and how systematic white supremacy dominates all areas of activity. Say it. Now you saw that? You saw that? Now I took it where I needed to go. I took the conversation where I needed it to go, and then she got on that. See? How white supremacy dominates all areas of activity. So now I'm waiting on her to react, and she she got that. She got she got on my thing where I'll put it out there, she she bit it. So white so it's your contention that white supremacy dominates all areas of activity? Yes, ma'am. All every yeah. Every area of activity between human beings, labor, law, entertainment, sex, war, politics, religion. Sports? And that's the dominant system. How about sports? That's the domineering system. Yes. How about yes, oh, sports, so the absolutely. NFL, Look the at NFL and the NBA is dominated by white supremacists? How to explain that? Yes, because the you have um, white team owners who say that their teammates or their their team players are inmates and slaves. Donald Sterling even referred to his players as slaves. And look at what, how they're being treated now. They're protesting non-justice and they're getting blacklisted from teams. So that just shows and proves that sports is even they're, dominated ultimately by systematic white supremacy. So what was your solution? Uh, now she couldn't counter that. So we shut that down right away. She thought, okay, because there's a lot of black players on sports teams that it's somehow not dominated by white supremacy. So she couldn't counter what I said, so I shut that down. So now she wanted to fake know what solutions were, all right? Now this was, now watch this very closely. I want y'all to, to peep. Be to that. Would you think that there should be a mandatory distribution of ownership assets based on percentage uh, ethnicity or race in the country and kind of do it in a kind of fanned out panoply of proportionality now now watch what she's doing i want y'all to catch what she's trying to do what she's trying to do is get me to say we want reparations which we should get but i'm not going to say that because she already has a canned response for reparations i already know that this is chess so notice how she's wording what she's wording to kind of bait me into saying that we want reparations Got it? Because she don't care about the solutions. She doesn't care about the solutions. So, but I'm not going to say the word reparations. I'm going to use words just like her. Now, follow that. Now, I hope y'all don't miss that. She's trying to get me to say the word reparations. So she has a canned response already. I already know. And reparations, that's a big buzzword with white supremacists. When you say reparations, like, oh, these niggas want something for nothing. I wasn't there during slavery, dude. They got a whole pitch for that. And that's what you don't do with these people. You don't give them a talking point so they can run and then just eat up the whole segment with their bullshit talking point and then cut you off. Because the name of the game for them is to get you to say something. They use it to spew their talking point and they'll spit that shit for the, le the next two minutes and then the segment is over. So they just use you to get their talking point out. Got it? So she's trying to get me to say reparations. Understand this. Uh, ethnicity or race in the country and kind of do it in a kind of fanned out panoply of proportionality? Well, the thing is how white supremacy works, it's all about maldistributing the resources and it's all about passing those maldistributed resources down through lineages. So we have to talk about redistributing those um, those resources that are deserving to the people who are supposed to get it. Wow, um, now see how I worded that. I didn't say reparations, though. See how I worded that? I want y'all to catch that. I want y'all. I'm going. I'm dancing all around the words reparations, and and that's that's kind of frustrating her because I'm not giving her what she needs. I keep putting it back on the white supremacists. I'm talking, ma'am, and I'm very hella polite too. I'm hella polite. I keep saying, well, ma'am, um, how white supremacy works is maldistributing the resources. Means you you're getting resources from ill-gotten gains and we should come up with ways to redistribute those maldistributed resources that were maldistributed by the white supremacists so i'm not giving her the reparations word i'm not giving her what she wants so she can't use her talking point 
I want y'all to follow me. This is chess here. She cannot use her reparations lazy blacks talking point in this context. Okay. Redistributing those um, those resources that are deserving to the people who are supposed to get it. Um, systematic white supremacy, it works based on deception. It works through propaganda. And that's something that we have to talk about and we have to flesh out. I want to replace the system of white supremacy with justice. Because See that? I'm, I want to replace the system. That's the, the Dr. Welsing and, and Neely Fuller says, we got to talk about replacing the system with the system of justice. So I'm giving her a solution. Let's replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. Let's redistribute the maldistributed resources to the people who need them. So I gave her the answer, okay? I gave her the answer. Because not only do we get it when it comes to resources in the criminal justice system, it's a racially biased system. So it, all across the board, it's a conversation that we should have naturally on how we remedy so, and replace right. the system of white supremacy okay. with justice. Yeah, I, I, I get your point. But mm -hmm. so my answer is the solution. So you believe it should should it be a monetary? Right. See, see that? See, see how slick she's trying to be? Now, see, I, I gave her an answer. Now, she, now, now, should it be monetary? Come on, nigger. Say reparations, nigger. Just she's trying to goat me into saying reparations. Just come on, nigger. Just say it so I can unleash all my bullshit. I need you to give it to me. Should it be monetary? Now, notice when I start to get into specifics, because I was about to, she cut me off. Because now she's getting frustrated. I'm not giving her the word reparations. So she's keep trying to bait me on. Okay. On how we remedy so, and replace right. the system of white supremacy okay. with justice. Yeah, I, I, I get your point, but mm -hmm. so my answer is the solution. So you believe it should should it be a monetary right. payout? Should it be monetary plus land or plus business ownership? I'm just trying to get the solution straight. <laughs> And, and I've been on solutions for a long time, and we've been trying to figure out how do we um, remedy systematic white supremacy. Now, when we try to get how about land hard as black work? people, when we uh, I have an idea. It's called well, hard work. Uh, boom. Boom. She got frustrated and said, fuck it. This nigga ain't, I'm, I'm trying to get my talking point about lazy Negroes trying to get something for nothing. He's not giving it to me. Let me just throw it on out there. How about hard work? She went full white supremacy. And I called her on it immediately. Because, see, that's the thing. That's what she didn't want. She thought I was just going to go play past that. And I immediately called her on that shit. I called her on that shit immediately. And then she tried to backpedal. Now, listen, y'all just heard what she said. How about hard work? We're talking about black people here. We're talking about black folks. She just said, how about hard work? And she knew she fucked up right after she said it, by the way. Hold on. Remedy systematic white supremacy. Now, when we try to get about land hard as black work. people, when we try... I have an idea. It's called well, hard work. Ma'am. The content of your character. I are let you, you speak that, for Are you saying time. that black people don't do hard work? No, I'm talking Laura, about... are you saying that black people don't oh, do hard nice, work? Nice try, nice trick. <laughs> I'm saying everybody. Just, oh, now she's trying... I'm saying everybody. No, you're not. Now, she knew she fucked up. I got her ass. And then she tried to backpedal. Uh, I'm not saying, no, no, no. I'm saying everybody should do hard work. No, we're not talking about everybody, ma'am. We're not talking about everybody. You're saying that black people don't work hard? Oh, no. Oh, no. She knew she fucked up, and I got her ass. Now, hold on. Content of your character. I are let you, you speak that, for Are a you long saying time. that black people don't do hard work? No, I'm talking Laura, about. Are you saying that black people don't oh, do hard nice, work? Nice try, nice trick. I'm saying everybody. But you just work said hard, that. You said friend. black people don't do hard work. The reason why you have. A and she's throwing her pen in the air. She's rolling her eyes. Oh, she's oh she's going into full white woman victim mode. Oh my gosh, she you, you got to see the visuals. She's throwing shit all in the air. Oh God. Oh, she fucked up and she knew she fucked up and I'm jumping on it. I'm exploiting her fuck up. She knew she fucked up. Saying that black people don't do hard work? No, I'm talking Laura, about... you saying that black people don't oh, do hard nice, work? Nice try, nice trick. I'm saying everybody But you just said hard, that. You said friend. black people don't do hard work. The reason why you have all the resources yeah. maldistributed yeah, into the dominant exactly society is black said. people. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. My friend, that's not that, at all that is what, what I said. You said and straight ahead, you know it isn't. That's the game you play. And straight ahead, the good news, you will not hear any place else how the Trump administration is saving taxpayers. Some change the day. She changed. Nigga, 
they changed the subject. She changed the subject, went to a commercial, <laughs> and I'm still talking at this point. I'm still talking. I don't know that I'm off the air yet. I talked for about 30 more seconds until I heard in my earpiece, okay, thank you, Tariq. You can leave. So it wasn't, hey, goodbye. Thanks for coming. You know, uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> They cut my, the. they had to save her in the sound room. They had to save her. They had to get on the thing. Okay, we got to cut it. No, you're looking bad here. They cut that shit and, you know, okay, you can leave. <laughs> and got me the hell up out the building. And I heard the, somebody said that commercial was like eight minutes long. They had to make up the time. But they cut me off. And listen to what she said. Listen to this. Listen to this. After she deflected to a commercial and cut me off. I what said, you said and straight ahead you know it isn't that's the game you play and straight ahead ma'am the good news you will not hear any place else how the trump administration is saving taxpayers some serious money and no one puts words in my mouth whoa you do catch that yeah how the, the trump is saving the taxpayers money no one puts words in my mouth you said it <laughs> you the one who said that it, well, how about hard work? Implying that black people don't work hard. You said that. And then she tried to go into white woman victim mode like I put words in her mouth and made her say it. She was desperately trying to go into white woman victim mode. You, you notice that? That Her whole thing was going into white woman victim mode and I put words in her mouth. Friend, that's not that, at all that is what, what I you said. said and straight ahead, you know it isn't. That's the game you play. And straight ahead, the good news, you will not hear any place else how the Trump administration is saving taxpayers some serious money, and no one puts words in my mouth. <laughs> but that was fun. I love to see them put their feet in their mouths. And that's how you have to deal with these white supremacists. Don't, you got to play chess with them. You got to play chess with them. You have to play chess with them. You cannot play checkers. You cannot let them um, goad you and, and bait you into a conversation that's going to um, justify their narrative. Again, she was looking for the words reparations. She was looking for the word reparations, and I wouldn't give her the word reparations. So she went on and shot her shot with that talking point. She went on and threw it out there anyway because she was getting frustrated. And see, the white supremacists female they let their emotions get the best of them and they go ahead and just spout shit out when they get frustrated so what's the solution you know the fake acting you know she could give two shits about a damn solution that's why i was very vague about it she could give a damn about some solutions so what's the solution well we can talk about the resources and there's businesses how about just hard work you know how disrespectful that is to black society to tell black people the reason why we're in a system of white supremacy is because we don't work hard? That's what she was saying, family. That's exactly what she was saying. It's that y'all niggas just need to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's that talk. Well, if you niggas just work hard and got off the welfare, you wouldn't have no white supremacy. I mean, who works harder than a damn slave? Y'all talk that hard work stuff. And I was going to break all that down if they had me, they kept me on the air. And they know that's where I was going. They know she fucked up. That's why they cut me off. When she said that, oh, they know it was a wrap. It was over. They had to immediately cut me because I was still going off behind the scenes. I was still going in, but y'all just couldn't hear me. But you know how disrespectful that is to black society, black people who built the wealth of this country with free African unpaid labor for you to sit your ass up here reaping the benefits from the, the wealth generated from free black African labor to say, well, y'all niggas just need to work hard. You know how disrespectful that is. This is why the white supremacists are getting so much karmic justice right now. 
This is why they're getting karmic justice right now. It's utterly pathetic. But again, I go on these shows, and I, I in this far in between, because they a lot of these shows want me to go on. Most of the time, I turn them down. But with people like that, she's a high-ranking person because she's supposed to be their intellectual. So I wanted to go toe to toe with her. I like going toe to toe with their intellectuals. You dig? Because I like to shut them down because the minute the white supremacists try to have a, an intellectual conversation and defend white supremacy, I got them. I got them because you can't intellectually defend white supremacy. It's, a, it's indefensible. And people try to create an intellectualized theory about it and you can break that shit all the way down. I love shutting that bullshit down and it's important that our people see us shut that bullshit down. See, look, I studied the greats like John Henry Clark and people like that. And dude, go back and look at some of the debate. Well, not he didn't do too many debates, but that infamous debate that John Henry Clark did with all these white scholars where he shut their whole shit down. Like at the, very, the minute he opened his mouth, he just shut their whole argument down. And they never recovered. When he did that lecture, uh, quote, debate, I don't know what, what city they did it in, but these white supremacists wrote these books about how the African, the Egyptians weren't really African and all this old stupid shit. And they were, you know, that in the 90s, they were trying that shit. Mary Lefkowitz and all these people, these white intellectuals, and they wanted a debate with John Henry Clark. And John Henry Clark just shut it down like, First of all, somebody said this was a debate. This is not a debate. He said, first of all, I've been teaching African history all my adult life, so there is nothing to debate. I only debate with my equals, all others I teach. And that just shut their shit all the way down. They, could, they couldn't even recover from that. That just fucked their whole argument up and they never recovered from that shit. You dig? I see we got a troll in the chat room. Is that that RC dude that, um, uh, he might just be a troll. Anyway, but anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of Tariq Radio. Glad to have everybody have tuning in. I hope you get your 1804 DVDs, 1804movie.com, ladies and gentlemen. Get your Hidden Colors 1, 2, 3, and 4 DVDs at HiddenColorsFilm.com. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys have a happy holiday. Hope you guys enjoying time with your family, your loved ones, your side piece, all that good shit. Y'all 